These are the plaintiffs, Keith McDonald and Renee Warnecki. Keith says he bought a motorcycle from the defendant, and the horrible guy tried to cover up a very dangerous problem which could have cost him his life. That chain broke. It punctured the engine, and oil was dripping down the back tire, which could have caused an accident. The defendant glued it all back together for the quick sale. He put his life in jeopardy, and he's here suing for the $4,800 it's going to cost him to fix the bike right. This is the defendant, Peter Karras. He says he sold the bike, which had been sitting for a few years, to the plaintiff. And now the guy's suing him eight weeks later for a so-called cracked engine. He has no idea what this man is talking about. Has no idea what he did with the bike for the last eight weeks. And has no idea why he's being sued today on this as-is sale. He's accused of attempting a cover-up. All parties, please use your right hand. Welcome back to the People's Court. Next case in the docket, the plaintiff bought a motorcycle from the defendant and says the guy covered up a potentially fatal problem. The chain broke and he Mickey Moused it together and it punctured the engine. The defendant says the guy had the bike for eight weeks. It's the case of Chain of Fools. Thank you, Douglas. Um, Keith McDonald and Renee Warren... Warrenicki? Warrenicki? Of course, common spelling. Warrenicki. <laughs> um, you are suing Peter Karras. For $4,800, the estimate for a repair to a motor on a motorcycle that you bought from him. Yes. Uh, and you feel he knew that there was this defect. Tell me what happened. All right, so I get it home from buying it what from What kind him. of motorcycle is this? It's a 2009 Hayabusa. Made by Suzuki? Yes. Okay. And uh, what did you pay for it? $7,000. All right. Was that a good price? Were you happy with your deal otherwise? It was the average price. Okay. So you bring it home on what day? Uh, 17th. Uh, July 17th. Of 2017. And yes. what happens? So uh, first when I was getting it from him, I noticed the chain was really loose on it. I asked like three times about it, and he kept diverting my attention to other things. Are you that easily diverted? I mean, if you notice that a guy's being evasive about it, doesn't that raise a red flag? I just didn't think much of it at the time, but now I well, know why. Well, you thought much of it because you asked three times, you say. Well, it was really loose. I had to ride it pretty far. I know. So if you thought about it, why wouldn't you insist on an answer? Okay, so go on. So I get it home, and I start smelling weird smells because it was, was epoxy the heating up. You had said that the drive was how far? It was from Hop Hog to West Hampton no, but Beach. How many miles? I don't know, maybe 40. Okay, so you get it home, and what happens? I start smelling weird smells of it because the epoxy was heating up, and it smelled funny, like something cooking. Okay, you, you were, at that point, all you know is that it smells funny. Yeah, it smelled okay. funny. And then? Like two days later, it starts dripping oil out of it. Okay. So I bring it to the I dealership. I take it that before you bought it, you didn't have a mechanic look at it, right? No. Okay. And you can't see the engine on it without taking the whole bike apart. There's plastic fairings around the whole thing. Right, so but a mechanic can do that, right? Like a ma mechanic could do that, yeah. Right, to take a look at the engine and to well, suggest the dealership you said they wouldn't have picked up on this without taking the whole bike apart. So it's not it, they'd have to take the engine apart to pick up on it. You have to take a lot apart. Yeah, the cam, the cam cover. A right, but all they have to do is stuff. is t it, take it apart enough to look at the engine, right? It's a couple hours work to take all that apart. To just see the engine. Yep. Okay. All right, so go on. So after three days, it's leaking. I bring it to the dealer, and um, they, tell, they call me and say, I need to come down. This thing has got a lot of problems. What are the problems? They removed the water pump, sprocket cover, shift cover, oil pan, grinded all the epoxy down, and attempted a repair on it. Um, Where's the epoxy? Uh, it's all over the engine. I have pictures of it all here. Yeah, let me see the pictures and let me see the material, the uh, invoice His, or the receipt yeah, yeah. or proposal that the dealership gave. What's going on? I, I had the bike for six years. I Were only, you the first owner? I was the second owner. Uh, I put about 3,000 miles on it. I never had <clears throat> any issues with the bike at all. It's mechanically sound, cosmetically sound. How long had the bike been sitting? 
about two years, two and a half years. Since Without my, being ridden once? Well, my brother would ride around my development. I had a construction accident, so I wasn't able to ride anymore. And I never had any issues with that bike. Appears that drive chain broke and smashed the sprocket. Where's that? Where's the drive chain? Where's the sprocket cover? Inside or outside? It's on the left side, inside. Okay, what's the chain that you said you saw loose? The drive chain. So that is visible from the outside? Yes. And according to you, you saw it that, that it had a problem and still bought it? It was just loose. It's a five minute thing to tighten it. Unit has damage on rear swing arm from drive chain contact. Epoxy repair on cases. What say you to that? What's well, I, what I say is the chain was probably loose on the way home on his 50 mile drive and, he, and the chain broke off and hit that. No. That thing and caused the damage on the way home is what the I feel. The transmission shifter cover has silicone on gasket with some pictures of damage. You have the, do you have? Okay. We both acknowledge that the chain was loose. It's a common stretch. It just needs to be adjusted every few years, but I hadn't ridden the bike, so there was no reason to adjust it. What are you doing in this picture? You have a wrench? Putting a license plate on. What am I looking at in this picture? That is the cracked case. Okay. Do you have anything in writing when you sold this to him? No. No? No bill of no. sale or anything like that? No. And this is uh, how old a bike? 2009. 2009. I mean, Judge, there's no epoxy on the planet that will hold a engine together under that kind of pressure. There's no pressure under it. It's just oil. Then why would it leak? See, but it here's the thing. Here's the thing. Hold on. Metal. Stop talking. So is this guy stuck? He asked about the chain. The guy was evasive? Definitely, yeah. He should have seen all the red signs. He should have seen the signs for sure. What do you say? He's just stuck. He has, it's his fault. Is he stuck? Is he stuck? I guess so, yeah. If he bought it, then that's his problem. Especially since there was some feeling he had about the chain. Right, exactly. Okay, going inside the card room. You bought a, an eight-year-old used bike, and when you buy a used vehicle, it's an as-is sale. I understand. Unless you can prove that they knew something. How are you going How about? How could you have it for that long and not know? I had it for three days and knew. I don't know. I mean, I have four other bikes than, and I know every inch of every I mean, But other than go to him, what else do I do? You know what I'm saying? You just know your machines when you own things, you know them. You know, you talk about how it would take hours to get to it to see the crack, but he's supposed to know it. Um, you know, you test drove it, you rode it around, you were able to ride it for 50 it. miles. I mean, maybe if the thing was loose, you shouldn't have ridden it for 50 miles. I never miles. got I don't know. to test drive it. Why wouldn't you test drive something you're buying? He drove it around the block and I watched. Why wouldn't you test drive it? I don't know. He wouldn't let you? Did you ask? What, what? But it would have drove fine. That, that wasn't I, the but problem. That's not my question. I'm just curious how your mind works. That's uh, why I'm just kind of curious how your mind works. So you don't you say, you ride it around and let me see how that looks well, like it might feel. I like it's know. weird. <laughs> had 4,500 miles on it. I know, I but you know, when you have as is, as is sales, you have to understand, you know, there's, and there's 50 miles that you drive, uh, you know, the, it could, maybe something went wrong on the way home. Would that be his fault? No. It would just have to be because of the timing, because then the Maybe exception would swallow up the rule, you see. If I, if I would just turn around and say, you know what, it happened so fast that it, it must be your fault, then there's no, ex there, there's no as is. It's not a brand new motorcycle that you bought from a dealer and then you find out that it, it's a lemon and then you have certain rights under the lemon law. When you buy a used vehicle, you don't have any of those rights. It's buyer beware. So it's as is unless he makes a specific warranty, like, I just put in a brand new engine. And then you take it and your guy says, that's not a brand new engine, he's a liar. Right, then that, then we got something there. Then I'd be ordering him to return your money. But if short of that, um, and he's a second owner, you know, I don't know, I don't know what to say. There's not a whole thing lot. Thing supposed to be in perfect condition. I pay 7,000 for a bike, I have to spend $5,200 to fix. Yeah, that's, that's, that happens a lot. There, you can't own it for six years and not know. Then, then, the, then in your world, the exception would swallow the rule. If you're saying to me, anybody who buys a used car or used motorcycle, once they find out that there's stuff wrong with it, should be able to return it because there's no way a guy can own something and not know it. If I were to, if that were the law, well, then there would be no it. rule that it is as is. Verdict for the defendant.
Well, unfortunately, the plaintiffs were not able to prevail here in court. Mr. McDonald, you understand what the judge was explaining to you? And the, the defendant had said he hadn't written it much in the last two years. So it's been sitting around pretty idle. It sounds to me like you probably should have test driven it yourself. Would you agree? It wouldn't have showed anything test driving it. I rode it 50 miles. It didn't show till the next day. Well, what can we say? Unfortunately, it's your bad luck, I guess. Anyway, yes, so. you couldn't, couldn't prove it in court, so I'm sorry for you. Okay? All right, thank you. You must sign a few documents on your way out of the courtroom. Mr. Karras is on his way out of the courtroom. I mean, what can you say? You, you certainly didn't know it was about to happen. Right? Very, I'm very pleased with the judgment, judge's ruling, because uh, the, the bike never had mechanical errors. Interesting. It's unfortunate, but it, it's what happened. No question. All right, thank you very much, sir. Thank okay, you, you must sign a few documents yourself. Harvey. Doug, there's only one other way this guy could have won, which is to prove fraud, but the fact is there's no fraud here.